In this simulation, I want to briefly discuss a transverse wave and some of the things that you can measure by observing a transverse wave. The first thing you need to recognize is that a transverse wave is generated by a vibration. And in this case, the vibration is this pole that traveling up and down. You'll note that the vibration of the particle is actually perpendicular to the direction of the wave that's going out the window. And each particle is doing exactly the same thing. They're simply vibrating vertically, in this case, to the direction of the wave, which is horizontal. And if you look at each of the green dots, and I can slow it down for you to make it a little bit easier, you can clearly see that each particle is simply vibrating perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Now if I pause the wave, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, there is an amplitude. The amplitude is simply the maximum height that the wave has. In this case, it's measured from the top of the crest to the equilibrium line. Of course, the amplitude can also be measured from the equilibrium line down to the bottom of the trough. But as long as there's no energy loss, the amplitude remains the same throughout the, set, the motion. The next thing you can measure is the actual distance. You'll notice that the cycle, in this case the cycle is represented by this sine curve, is that the distance from crest to crest repeats and we call this distance the wavelength. Of course I can measure the wavelength also from trough to trough or in fact I can measure the wavelength from any two particles that are actually totally in sync with each other. So for example, this dot here and this dot here, if you were to observe it, and I may need to slow it down, you'll see that they're generally speaking, they're going to be in sync with each other. Now, it's not very clear here, but nonetheless, two particles that are in sync with each other, they are separated by one wavelength. Now what happens, what else can be measured here? Well, clearly, there's a rate at which this piston vibrates. And there's two aspects that I can measure. I can either measure how long it takes to complete one cycle or one uh, loop or one vibration, and that's called the period. But the other way I can measure it is by referring it to the frequency. And the frequency is the rate at which this actually vibrates. So if I increase the frequency like this, you can clearly see that the vibration increases. In this case, it's going at roughly two hertz, or two times per second. Therefore, the time can also be determined in terms of its period. In other words, it takes one half of a second for it to go one complete cycle. And the period and frequency are, in, are, are basically uh, reciprocals of each other. What else did you notice as I increased the frequency? and decrease the frequency. Well clearly the wavelength changes as well. The wavelength increases if I decrease the frequency and as I increase the frequency clearly the wavelength decreases. What that means is that they are inversely proportional to one another. As one increases the other decreases. But have you noticed something that doesn't change? That's right, the speed. The speed remains constant. Whether I increase the frequency or decrease the frequency, the rate at which the wave moves out through the window clearly is remains the same. And that's because the product of the frequency and the wavelength equals the velocity of the wave. V equals F lambda. And that's often referred to as the wave equation. And one of the most important formulas in the understanding of waves. So the speed remains constant. If you increase the speed, sorry, if you increase the frequency, you decrease uh, the wavelength. So if I speak in a high voice, the wavelength has decreased. If I speak in a low voice, the wavelength has increased. But the speed remains the same. If I change the amplitude, of course the peak gets smaller, but neither the frequency, nor the wavelength, nor the speed changes. So how can I change the speed of a wave? Well the only way to speed, change the speed of a wave is altering the medium or the material that the wave passes through. 
So in, the sound, in terms of air, my voice is traveling currently roughly around 330 meters per second. But it varies with temperature because temperature changes the density of the air. So similarly in this string, if I change the tension of this string, then I'm changing the medium. And so I can lower the tension and you can clearly see that the speed of it decreases. Increasing the tension, the speed of the wave increases. And so this shows as well that the medium can alter the speed of the wave. But notice that the wavelength and frequency do not change when I change the tension. I hope that gives you a bit of a better understanding of how transverse wave works.